Hey, Curtis. Hmm. You can go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, I wonder why I don't. Do you see my myself? Yeah. It took a minute there, but I think people are, are joining. Uh, maybe our audience can just let us know if they're able to see James in the chat there. And <clears throat> okay, yeah, good, good evening, everyone. Sorry, I didn't say anything because I didn't, I didn't think it had started because my, I don't see myself. Um, I don't know if you all could put in your chat whether you're seeing me or not. I did share my presentation screen there, so maybe you see that. Um, I just see a big J for James. And C for Curtis, we're here, but I guess our, I mean, my video is, my camera is turned on and so, and in my settings, I can James, see James, if you just want to maybe refresh, refresh, refresh your refresh. screen, like just, like uh, just uh, reset or uh, recycle your browser and let's give that a try. Hello everyone, I'm back here. Sorry about that a little hiccup at the beginning. So my name is James Hartley and I'll be the presenter this evening for the ASI Hour. So welcome everybody that's coming in. Um, thank you for joining us again. Uh, it's every Thursday again at the same hour here, eight o'clock Eastern. And so we'll be meeting again next week. Let me just say in the beginning here before I get started, uh, next week will be the ministry track and Jesse's Vicar will be sharing um, about how to start a ministry or even a business with zero dollars. That's his topic for next Thursday. So hope you can uh, join there as well. So um, tonight I decided to, uh, so I've been helping with ASI Hour on the health track over the past year. And um, I just recognized that we had, an, we, we had a really good response and good attendance uh, last month when we, when we just talked about herbs. We had Lee Wellard with us. That was fantastic. He's so great on that topic. If you didn't get to see it, maybe you could go back and, and watch the, the recording. Um, we haven't had a, a, a week just on hydrotherapy, and I just really feel that's such an important um, remedy that God has provided for us, something very easy to be done that can be done in our homes, um, something I've been involved with and in helping to teach for the past 20 years. Um, something I practice in my daily life, um, even when I'm well, as just a tonic. And uh, for sure, if I'm sick or my, my kids, I've got a three and a five-year-old, um, my wife, we all use hydrotherapy pretty ex uh, extensively. And we just recently got over a, a, a viral infection. I'm not sure if it was COVID. It sure felt like it. <clears throat> One of our friends did test positive. We were all down for a good week. Um, so that's kind of thought we thought it was, but anyway, we got tested towards the end. We, we didn't get tested earlier. So it was kind of towards the end of it. It came negative. So I don't know. So whatever, whatever that was, it was something uh, not so easy to handle. I don't know if any of you uh, have suffered this past year, any viral infections aside from COVID, just regular flu or colds. It's never fun, whatever it is. Um, hydrotherapy, I've really noticed um, over, the, over the years that it can really, really lessen um, your symptoms and make it just a lot more comfortable and support your body to get over it, you know, as quick as possible. Viruses often just have to, they have to run their course, though if you don't take care of yourself, they can really, uh, they can really get dragged out. And as we've seen with COVID, it can turn into a lot of complications. So um, let's just start with a word of prayer. I want to be uh, talking about one of God's great remedies. Um, there's a, there's a, real, a nice little quote that I found recently that I hadn't noticed before. Where Ellen White talks about, she says, um, air, water, and sunlight, God's great remedies. <clears throat> so a lot of times we talk about the eight laws of health. That was just one little statement on the three great remedies air, water, and sunshine. I want to highlight one of those this evening, and that's water, especially in the treatment of um, you know, different ailments that we have and just for our overall health and well-being. So let's have a word of prayer, and I'll get into the material. Father, thank you so much for the chance to be with this group here this evening on the ASI Hour, and we're grateful to be your sons and daughters 
you've created us, you've created our immunities to battle various issues that we, um, diseases that we face and kind are encountered with in this world. And thank you, Lord, for providing agencies in nature to boost up our immunity, to help us to be healthy and to overcome um, these different things. So uh, bless us as we study into it. And we just ask that you would bless everything tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so um, hydrotherapy, effective home remedies. That's, that's uh, the introduction. Now, hydrotherapy, what is it? It's external use of water in the medical treatment of certain diseases. And um, uh, more than just medical, I think it's, it, it can be very much for the lay person. So I know some of you may be in the medical field and might be interested more in hydrotherapy. Others, you know, I, I, it's, it's something simple enough that, you know, we're not trying to <clears throat> pretend like we're doctors treating serious conditions, of course, unless we needed to, but um, hydrotherapy can be used for a lot of things from a sore throat to a swollen ankle to um, congestion, head congestion, chest congestion, headaches, um, back pains. I mean, you can use water in various forms um, in a lot of different ways. So let's just kind of explore some of the advantages of water, why it's so great and such a blessing. It's, it's available to everybody. It's inexpensive. It has a, a power to absorb heat and also release heat. It's a universal solvent. So whenever you're using water, it, it tends to purify and detoxify. It's completely non-irritating uh, internally or externally. You can use it in three useful states uh, in a liquid with varying temperatures from extreme cold to very hot, uh, lukewarm. All of these temperatures have different uses. Uh, which we're going to talk about this evening. It can be used as a solid with ice. It can be used as a vapor and with steam inhalation. And all of those very useful. It's just so applicable and it can be used anywhere uh, in the world and in, in the comforts of your own home. Um, and very easy to apply. I'll show some treatments. Some are a little bit more complicated than others. Not, not necessarily so easy, but some are, some are super easy, you know, as easy as jumping in the shower. So um, let me get over to the slide here. So um, the history of hydrotherapy is kind of interesting. It's, it's uh, definitely nothing new. One of the oldest treatments known in this world. Um, Hippocrates was known and has several statements about the uses of water in treating the sick. Uh, the Chinese used hydrotherapy several centuries before Christ. The Japanese are, are, are recorded as using hydrotherapy over the past millennium. Um, the Spartans of ancient Greece even were known for using baths and, and even making the cold bath mandatory by law. Hold that thought because we're going to be talking about the cold bath tonight. So the, the Greeks were very um, um, uh, passionate, I guess, about the cold bath. And I've been getting more passionate about that uh, this year. And I want to share a little bit about that, but um, nobody was probably more known for using hydrotherapy than the Romans. The Romans used it extensively. You can travel through Europe and, and visit some of the ancient Roman ruins. I visited one in Portugal that was an old ba uh, bathhouse. Um, and you could see how it all looked like. They had a model there and then they, they kind of showed what, what they had, the ruins, and they had all these different baths. Some of them had furnaces underneath to heat up uh, the hot baths and they had other ones that were non-heated, that were cold. And the, and the Romans would walk back and forth from the hot baths to the cold baths. They found it to be excellent uh, for health and they were definitely right about that. And they were, they were using, I mean, the, the the extent that they built these, to the extent that they built these places, shows how much they valued the the power of 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 water and bathing. Um, <clears throat> of course, during the Dark Ages, that knowledge really decreased and was mostly lost sight of. And so, it wasn't really until the Renaissance and the the times of the Reformation that that uh, water therapy kind of came back into play. Uh, one of the reformers, John Wesley, even wrote a booklet about hydrotherapy in 1747. Um, <clears throat> of course, that was a very interesting era. There was a lot of things coming out of it, some of it good, some of it uh, 
not so good. A lot of kind of witchcraft kind of things and um, sorcery and magic and so forth. Um, but Wesley was clear on what he thought was appropriate, and he found the simple agency of water to be very effective. He didn't get caught up in all of that uh, hocus pocus. Turn to the eight, 19th century, the 1800s, and you see hydrotherapy used extensively th throughout the United States. 213 hospitals used it as, as really one of the primary um, modalities for, for uh, assisting the sick. Um, the Adventists were right along in that group, um, opening our first clinic in 1866 there in Battle Creek, our first medical director, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. He wrote several books on hydrotherapy and was really a leader in, um, in that field, along with many other uh, remedies. He was an outstanding person, very um, well-studied, creative and thinking, very smart and um, invented different kind of exercise equipments, the light, light therapy, water therapy. And we have, I have one of his old books. It's thick. It's a big, looks like a huge Bible, uh, with just like over a thousand uses of water. Uh, it's just really, really incredible. So, uh, but continuing into the 20th century, uh, and the erection of another sanitarium there outside of Los Angeles, Loma Linda, the first president there was Dr. George Abbott, and he also was a firm believer in hydrotherapy, wrote several books about it, used it extensively, and that became very important that Adventists were holding on to the, the natural remedy of water in, in, in this era because the world was drifting away from it. By around the time of the turn of the century, um, drug medications were becoming more in vogue and um, more and more, the hydrotherapy type of treatments were, were fading away and, um, you know, medications were more taking prominence. And, of course, there's a lot of reasons why that was. I don't want to get into all of that. But um, just to say, Avenus were continuing at least up into a very important time, which was uh, immediately following World War I. There was a, a, a devastating pandemic, um, the, the Spanish flu. Uh, the, of, of 1918 that uh, killed an estimated 50 million worldwide. About one third of the U.S. population was infected with this virus. Um, hospitals were full to capacity. Even grave sites were filling up. Uh, it was a terrible time in U.S. and world history. And so, the, obviously, if we can try to, we can kind of have a little bit of a glimmer of what that was like, how things have been. Of course, the world was very different back then, but we've been going through something similar this past year, I guess. Um, Dr. Abbott uh, wrote that in his observation, and not, not only his observation, there's actually military study done on 7th Avenue's treatment because it, it looked as if um, we were more successful in treating those infected than the rest of the medical world and the military. Um, and I appreciate how Dr. Schwelt did point out last year, it was more, we were more effective specifically, uh, for patients that came in without pneumonia. If they came in already with a deep set of pneumonia, our survival rate was not much better than elsewhere. But what we were very good at doing is treating extensively with hydrotherapy immediately when, when the patients came in the door, uh, with the virus and we were able to prevent them from getting pneumonia. Pneumonia, you know, was pretty much kind of a death sentence. And so they were desperately working to prevent that. And hydrotherapy assisted greatly in that. And so our survival numbers were greater. And it was um, documented by Dr. Abbott and the work that they were doing at Loma Linda, as well as the United States government. So just a little background to that. Um, hydrotherapy, physiologically, um, <clears throat> What, how can we use water in, in, in what ways? I've just got a, a brief list here. So with, with water and the uses of different temperatures of water, uh, we can move blood from one part of the body to another. Um, uh, by applying heat, you can dilate the blood vessels and, and draw blood to a part of the body so you can manipulate uh, where you want blood to be. Um, so 
you know, with hydrotherapy, you just have to think of what, what your, what your, what your outcome is, what you're shooting for. And, um, if you have blood congestion, if you have a, a, a headache that might be from congestion, which may be just a, a teaspoon too much blood in your brain, placing feet, your feet in a bucket of hot water or running over some water in your tub, which I do sometimes until your feet are nice and your lower leg are nice and rosy colored. Um, often that alone can help alleviate a headache. It just shifts the blood slightly. Okay. So we're able to move blood from one part of the body to another. Um, and so with that power and ability, you can, you know, there's other effects here. You can uh, relieve congestion. Like I gave an example of congestion in the brain. It could be chest congestion. It could be abdominal uh, uh, congestion. Three it could be increasing uh, your circulation with the use of water. That is a very important uh, advantage there because that in turn then, as point number four says, stimulating the immune system. Um, with water, you can you can raise body temperature, you can lower body temperature. Not not always. And in, in some some fevers are really persistent, but I've seen a lot of cases where fevers can be lowered. Um, with temperate, uh, temperate baths. Um, number six, you can release heat from the body in case of fever. Okay. As I just mentioned and rounding off this, um, number seven, we can remove toxins from the body. Eight, we, it, it, hydrotherapy tends to promote relaxation and rest. If, if you've ever had a good hydro treatment, you right, re you recognize that you feel very relaxed afterwards. Okay? It just really soothes the nerves and um, balances out the circulation, you feel great, and it's very relaxing afterwards. It can be relaxing during the treatment too, but not, not every treatment is super relaxing because there's some, could be some ice involved, could be some cold water involved. Sometimes the, the heat is a little bit uh, much to, to bear. Uh, but afterwards, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna rest very well, and it can be a very good stress uh, reducer. Um, and I'll give some examples of that, but it's just, it's just excellent for, for not only physically, but mentally as well. Um, uh, with hydro, obviously physical therapists use this all the time. You can reduce pain. Um, ice is just tremendous for that. I'll give uh, some examples of that. And in, in addition, these last two, we, we can even enhance the supply of oxygen and tissues, uh, nutrients to the tissue. So it can help with healing. And there are some more advanced treatments um, that we use at, at Wildwood Lifestyle Center for, for that. We've helped people uh, save their lower extremities when they've had uh, sores, uh, diabetic kind of sores that weren't healing. And with very careful treatments, able to get blood down to that sore so it would heal when that person's um, physician was wanting to amputate. In fact, there was one gentleman that I remember very well. Uh, his name was George. He's he's passed away. Um, this was this was probably 15 years ago. But I remember George visited our institute. Mm, it must have been about three or four different times that we saved his legs. Um, and he was always so appreciative of Wildwood for and of course to the Lord. He was a, a Baptist and was really appreciated uh, Adventist and our health message and it and it helped him a lot. Um, he was able to live the rest of his life with his legs. And um, he eventually passed away um, but with both his legs. So praise the Lord. Um, number 11, it also promotes rapid healing of tissues. That, those kind of go hand in hand, 10 and 11. So let me, let me move on here. Um, this is a, just an illustration to see, you know, what, what we can do with, with water. Um, a nor having a normal artery there, the solid red would be your blood flow. And so th through the use of hot and cold treatments, we can in, uh, get the kind of response in the body that would bring upon vasoconstriction or vasodilation, where the blood flow is either being restricted or it is being enhanced. Okay, so when we're applying heat, um, we have that, th these are kind of responses that you might see in, in the body. You're gonna see increased blood flow with a hot application. And, uh, you, you also see increased inflammatory response. So if you have a sprained ankle, you don't apply heat, you apply ice. Um, Cause hot will, will tend to increase inflammatory response, edema production, of course, hemorrhage with the blood flow. Um, heat can also relax muscles and, and decrease muscle pain, spasm and stiffness and arthritis. Um, cold, on the other hand, 
does a lot of the opposite, but not everything. Um, it, it, it tends to decrease blood flow, decrease inflammatory response, decrease edema, decrease hemorrhage. Also, interestingly, decrease muscle pain and spasm. And um, so that's similar to the hot. You can use, you know, uh, sometimes a lower back pain. You might be soothed with a hot pack. Um, and I wish that was the most effective treatment, but just from my experience, uh, it's, it's really the ice that uh, is the most effective. It's the most uncomfortable. Um, and you can use gel packs, you know, the, from the freezer that work pretty good. But the strongest is definitely uh, something we call an ice massage. Uh, I can give a little more explanation of that later, but very, very effective. Um, and you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't use ice directly on arthritic type of pain, but hot and cold you could use. So we'll, we'll talk about that. We're going to get into some, I want to, I want to share some more specific treatments. So I'm kind of going through this relatively fast because I want to get more practical. This is just more of introduction. Um, good statement from the ministry healing on hydrotherapy from 237 reads, there are many ways in which water can be applied to relieve pain and check disease or put a stop to disease. All should become intelligent in its use in simple home treatments. So that's why we're having this as a lecture this evening. Uh, we have our orders here. We should all really be learning more about water, how to be using it in our homes in simple treatments for pain and different aches and pains that we get, uh, and as well as how to deal with certain diseases and different uh, conditions that we might face. Okay, um, another one here. This is also from Ministry of Healing, yeah, same page. In health and in sickness, so notice hydrotherapy, um, water is a very important blessing to maintain health and also to help us get back to health. So in health and in sickness, pure water is one of heaven's choicest blessings. Its proper use promotes health. The external application of water is one of the easiest and most satisfactory ways of regulating the circulation of the blood. Now, pay attention to this part right here. A cold or cool bath is an excellent tonic. So here's what she's doing. She's going through some of the advantages of the different temperatures. Okay, so a tonic, an excellent tonic, something that will help maintain your health, kind of give a boost to your body, even when you are not sick, okay? A cold bath or cool bath uh, is really, really good, all right? Then we have warm baths. She says warm baths, open pores, and thus aid in the elimination of, of impurities. So for washing, for cleansing, the warm is, is definitely better. Um, while both warm and neutral baths, a neutral would be closer to body temperature, right? So warm and neutral baths, Maybe we're talking water in the 90s, uh, maybe 100 degrees, you know, new, uh, relatively close to body temperature. It tends to be very soothing. It can be very relaxing. Um, it can uh, neutralize uh, circulation. But many have never learned by experience the benefits, beneficial effects of the proper use of water, and they are afraid of it. Who could be afraid of water? Well, uh, if you really look at the context of this uh, in this chapter, she's really talking about the cold for the most part. I don't think I've never met anyone that's uh, afraid of warm water or neutral water or, uh, of course, you know, some people don't like it very hot, but uh, the context is definitely with the cold. There's, we've seen it here. We, we can hear the, our lifestyle guest uh, squealing sometimes in the in the hot and cold shower chamber. It's like a human car wash where you get blasted from all sides we've got 12 nozzles that are are hitting you and when that cold comes on yeah you get some reactions um well some are afraid of it and they're just not willing to go there and so they lose out on the blessing water treatments are not appreciated as they should be and to apply them skillfully requires work that many are unwilling to perform uh that might be part of the reason why hospitals got uh more and more away from hydrotherapy if you looked at our laundry department, you would see the amount of work that comes into the amount of laundry it creates, the amount of hot water, the amount of labor. You need a lot more workers, one um, therapist for one patient for up to an hour, and then plus all the cleanup and laundry and afterwards and all the hot water you're using. It's a lot of expense. And so, um, I mean, if you have a hospital full of patients, just imagine the, the amount of laundry 
the amount of lay staff you would need if every patient was getting some form of hydrotherapy treatment, especially if it was every day. It's just really a tremendous amount of work. And even in our homes, I mean, we could be a little lazy and just not want to do some of the things. Um, but none should feel excused for ignorance or indifference on the subject. It's really, really important. So, um, okay, enough of the, uh, of the introduction here. Let me just walk through some of the common treatments that, that we use and we teach people to use in their homes. Uh, number one is the contrast shower or bath. Um, this may be the easiest. I'm, 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 I'm assuming everybody here is, is showering daily or taking a bath daily. Uh, it's, a, it's very important to do that just for hygiene and cleanliness. But while you're there, take advantage of boosting yourself up with a, with a little, a little um, hydrotherapy. So let me explain um, the contrast shower. So a contrast shower a uh, general contrast shower treatment would be, and it's not really a treatment, I'm saying treatment, it's just, uh, you know, this isn't really a medical um, treatment that you, you giving yourself a shower in, in your own home, but uh, it's a therapy, I guess, uh, however you want to call it. But you would start with about three minutes. You want to warm yourself up, with good warm, hot water, and, and increasing the heat as basically as much as you can bear, so how I like to do it. Uh, and sometimes that takes maybe a little bit more than three minutes on the first one. Because I'm kind of cold coming into the shower, um, so you might go three to four minutes, and then then the hard thing is to uh, turn the hot water off and turn the cold water on, and um, <clears throat> that can be that's very invigorating. Now it may be a little bit too much for some that are not used to cold water. Um, some are a bit more sensitive to it, so you may have to mingle, you know, a little bit hot into it. But as long as there's a good uh, temperature change that you can bear, you kind of have to, you know, feel yourself out there, how, what you can handle with it. But basically, you want to handle as cold as you can get. Don't worry, because you're going to still get warm again, because the hot's going to come back as long as you have hot water in your hot water tank. Um, so uh, just repeating, the first hot is three minutes or four minutes, and then you're going to go at least 30 seconds on the cold. You could go up to a minute. Um 30 seconds is kind of a minimum and, you know, 30 seconds an hour, you know, shower with 12 nozzles is, means a lot more than in, in the home. So I, I think in the home generally you should go more than three minutes because, because it's taking a while, unless you have a multiple multi nozzle, you know, chamber shower chamber, but if you just have a regular, you know, it takes a while to turn around and make sure it's hitting all parts of your body. I would try to like kind of at least go over the whole body twice. That might take a little bit more than 30 seconds, uh, 30 seconds to a minute. And then you go back to the hot and you just repeat that cycle basically uh, three to five, up to five times. Three would be, you know, pretty much a, a, a minimum to really get a good effect on it. Um, you finish with the cold and it gets easier. The colds get easier. The first cold is harder than, than the second and the, and the second is a little bit harder than the third. Third is usually welcome if you're getting hot enough. Um, you try to get as hot as you as, as you can, basically. And if you have an upper respiratory, so why? Oh, sorry. Why why would you do this treatment? You know, um, it's this is a very generalized treatment. You what you're doing is you're really going to boost. Uh, you're going to increase your circulation, your microcirculation. With that hot and cold application, you're you're kind of getting a pumping action of your blood vessels being dilated, constricted, dilated. And remember, let me just uh, point this out. You know, with cold cold does constrict blood vessels, but what it, but the outcome may turn into a dilation because when your body feels the cold or feels the ice, if you rub ice on a part of your body, you know, it's not going to take very long before that, that, that area of the body of the skin turns really red or, or pink because the blood is being drawn there because the body doesn't, is, is seeing the, the ice almost as a threat. So it's like the brain's like, well, this is cold. Let's, let's send some blood there. Let's, let's, so the cold actually actually does, you know, the outcome of it can really be an increase of circulation, um, even though it, uh, you know, immediately might have that constricting effect. Um, and so you'll see if you do this full treatment, three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold, three minutes hot, three seconds cold, three minutes hot, three seconds cold, you should notice the difference on your skin. And um, 
there there'll be a lot of circulation so all that blood is getting drawn out to the surface of the skin so if you had congestion in your in your trunk or or even in your head or where um you know it's going to help balance that out a bit that increase of circulation does ramp up your immunity um kind of kicks it into high gear it it helps with your white blood cell um uh mobility and production and so it can better help you to overcome um, bacterial infections, viral infections. So it's a very common treatment. It can be for stress. It can be for insomnia because it can really help you relax. When you're done with the treatment, dry off very well, uh, hop into bed, cover yourself up with blankets. Don't let any draft. You don't want to get chilled and, um, you should just feel really, really good. You know, you should, you should feel very light and this is really, really great, great for the body. So it's just a general, a, a generally a really good treatment. Now, on a daily basis, I would I would challenge everybody, you know, even if you're not dealing with any kind of uh, cold or flu or something, you know, try to finish with cold, you know, finish your shower with cold. Well, this is this is challenge number one. I've got an advanced challenge coming here um, that I, I haven't really gotten so much into until this past year, um, trying to do really do everything that I can, you know, in in prevention and figuring out how to strengthen my 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 uh, immunity and body. But um, for the past 20 years, I have always finished my showers with, uh, with a cold blast, okay? Um, and I have never felt cold coming out of the shower. You know, it's, um, it's cold, you know, it doesn't feel so good, but I feel like it kind of boosts up my system. Um, you know, the blood circulation really just kicks in there. I step out of the shower, you know, the skin is, is, is pink. Um, you know, I'm drying off, I'm not, I'm not cold at all. And it just really kind of wakes you up in the morning or it can even help relax you in the night. It kind of has that, that effect. Um, so it's just really good. You know, who needs coffee? Just blast yourself with some cold water in the morning. You know, it's, it's, uh, it can be a little uncomfortable, but you can grow, you get used to it. So with cold, there's tolerance that you can build. So you kind of have to work on it a little bit. So I guess I've done it for quite a while. It doesn't really bother me. I, I'm, I'm from the north. I'm from Wisconsin. I grew up in, around cold weather. I used to have to take swim lessons in cold water outside. Remember that. Um, so maybe I've kind of got used to it. My wife is Brazilian. She doesn't, she's more warm blooded. She doesn't like it so much. Uh, it's harder for her. But uh, so let me save this. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about cold showers uh, in a little bit. How much time I have? Okay. We've got about, we got a little time left. I think we'll be okay. So let me, but let me just jump to, uh, well, contrast shower or bath. So the bath would be this kind of the same thing. I mean, if you have two tubs, I just, you know, it's not very common to have, but, um, you know, you have to like submerge in one and then, and then, so you could do like three minutes in a hot tub and then jump in a cold tub. That would be even more powerful because water submerging will affect your body temperature, your core temperature way faster. So, um, you know, a shower is pretty lightweight compared to submerging of, of water. So, you know, you, you can handle a, a hundred and uh, 12 degree shower, you know, rel maybe relatively easily, but a 112 degree hot tub, you know, you won't be able to stay in there very long. You're going to, you're just going to really feel how, how much it heats you up. And that's cold too. It just sucks it out of you. I mean, to jump in cold water is, is a challenge. Um, showers, showers really, uh, it's a piece of cake if we take it there. <laughs> so I know it's not for everybody, but you can adjust it. All right. So contrast three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. You know, that could even be a different body part. Let me just throw that in here. Could be your ankle is swollen. You sprained it a day or two ago. Initially, you should be putting ice on that. But afterwards, you can do three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold, three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold in a little basin. And that's going to pump that circulation down to your ankle and help reduce, get some of that swelling out of there and help, help with the healing process. So that could be your knee, that could be your ankle, it could be your shoulder, it could be your elbow, it could be your hand. They're not all very easy parts of the body to, to submerge in a, in a water, you know, but uh, you get creative. And I, I remember I messed up my knee. I tore a ligament in it. And um, I used a tall uh, kitchen wastebasket, just filled it up with, I had two of them with a high chair. And I just kind of went back and forth. Uh, so you, it's not always so easy, but you find a way. Now, the hot foot bath is something very, very good if you have a cold. Um, upper respiratory, you know, you're not feeling too well, headache. Um, to do it really, really well, you should um, have somebody helping you. You're sitting down in a chair 
and placing your feet in a bucket of as hot a water as you can handle and then having someone wrap around really you should lay down the, a sheet and blanket and then you sit on top of that sheet of blanket and have someone kind of mummy wrap you um, so you're really covered up well and that's blankets even kind of over the bucket of water and someone's helping you put cold on the head because you don't want to overheat yourself and let me just say while, while i'm on that really the only thing that can go wrong generally with hydrotherapy is you could burn somebody or or someone could get dehydrated or if they're not drinking enough it's a sweating trip you got to drink a lot of water the steam you got to be very careful you don't burn somebody if someone has any numbness in their extremities from diabetes or something you'd be very you probably shouldn't do any hot treatment on the extremity unless you had temperature gauges and, and a lot of supervision on it you kept that water really lower, like uh, 101, 102 degrees, nothing, nothing high. Um, uh, also, yeah, you don't want the head to get too hot. I mean, the, you can't be in a sauna or a jacuzzi and just cook. You, you start cooking brain cells. So uh, you have to be measuring, uh, you know, checking, make sure you're not giving yourself a, a high fever and hurting yourself. So those are three things. Don't burn. Uh, make sure you're hydrated. Don't let the head get too hot. Keep ice on the head. So hot, any kind of sweating treatment like that. Hot foot bath is a sweating treatment. So keep the head cool, ice rag on the head, have a little base in there, some ice water, um, help, having somebody help you get some water. And um, you're going to sit there with the feet in hot water for a good 20 minutes, 20, yeah, 25 minutes. Kind of depends on how long it takes for you to get sweating. Um, and to get that, you kind of have to keep adding hot water. So I usually have like a little electric kettle there that we keep adding. Uh, sometimes you have to take some water out in case your basin gets too full. We keep adding so it stays hot. You keep kind of testing the person's feet so it stays as hot as they can handle it. Um, hot foot bath, really good. It, it can reduce congestion. It can help with menstrual cramping. Um, the full bath is stronger. So um, you might try the hot foot bath. It might kind of just pull enough blood away from your your um, abdomen uh, and uh, area and that might bring relief. If that doesn't work, you may need a full hot bath. That can definitely help quite a bit. Um, but it could relieve brain congestion. It could relieve chest congestion, sinus congestion, kind of help bring some of that down. And, you know, your feet are the furthest, furthest thing away from your heart. So it's really good to just kind of help with, assist your circulation. Your feet can tend to get cold. It'll be, get, get cold is the easiest. So, you know, that's not good if you're battling anything. So it's good for circulation. That, that can help boost up your immunity. The sweating is good, you know, it's warming up the person. So there's a good, lot of good reasons for giving a hot foot bath. And, you know, I'm kind of lazy sometimes with hydrotherapy in my house. I've come home from work, from lunch, even over lunch break, stress, maybe have a headache, um, too much brain work or whatever. Sit, roll, take off my shoes, socks, roll up my pants, stick my feet under running hot water until they're good and red. And sometimes that alone just, just really uh, kind of resolves the issue. Take about a minute. Um, now, Russian steam bath. Uh, this is a really, really important one, especially with um, um, COVID-19. Um, really any, any virus, but, but in, in particular, I think this is something that, that uh, because of COVID, we need to be reflecting on here. Um, viruses in general don't handle higher temperatures very well. That's why your body uses fever a lot to, to, to try to kill, kill the viruses off. You know, just a slight change in body temperature can really make life uh, uh, hard or impossible for viruses. So the Russian steam bath or, or just the, you know, wet, wet sauna um, can be used to induce sweating, increase core body temperature um, and help boost the immune system in its process. So I want to show you a picture here. So this is this is something that I've been using. I, I purchased one of these uh, last spring and uh, just so I had one in my house because I, I figured, you know, look, yeah, if, if, if COVID is going around, you know, I don't want to get anybody else sick. I'm not going to try to go to our hydrotherapy department or somewhere else uh, if I get it. So I want to be able to really treat it, you know, at my house. So, so I bought this, um, there's some different websites. You can order. These are very common, I guess, in, 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 in China and in, in Korea. Um, and so they're a little small, you know, I kind of feel like when I'm sitting in it, it's kind of for, for a shorter, uh, uh, Asian lady that's like in the picture there. Uh, my knees are kind of hitting the thing, uh, on the sides, but, uh, you know, it comes with a little stool, 
and that's like a pressure cooker next to it. So you just put a liter of water in there and you, and you turn up, you, you twist, you, you seal the lid and you've got this tube, the water starts boiling in there and it's got a little steamer thing. And so it's just steaming inside. But this is like, this can get broken down. It's held up with some PVC pipe. Um, and so it's, it can break down and pack away easily. Um, so I, I've been doing these and when we went through, um, this strong virus, whatever it was, um, I was doing this uh, once or twice every day, uh, as well as with the hot and cold showers, and as well as some steam inhalation. And um, over the past year, I guess at Wildwood, we've probably had about 40, 40 plus cases. Everyone has been treated in their home. Everyone was doing similar treatments, hot and cold showers, steam inhalation, um, steam baths like this. In some cases, people were doing the fomentations to the chest, which I, which I can explain. Everyone was able to recover 100%. Nobody had to go to the doctor. Um, and so, well, you know, praise God for that. That doesn't mean that someone may not have to go to the doctor, but um, we hope not. We're trying to prevent that, we're trying to prevent pneumonia, trying to prevent, you know, having to call in any kind of ventilator or something. It's just not, it's just not good. So right away, you know, one, as soon as you feel any symptoms, you just jump on it. You get in the shower, you get rest right away. You just stop work, stop, cut any stress out of your life. You just start focusing on your health, drinking water, lots of vitamin C, citrus, lemons, you know, there's herbs you can take, like Lee mentioned last month, um, garlic and so forth. Um, but hydrotherapy, you know, something you can do right away, hit a hot and cold shower, jump in the steamer. Uh, afterwards, you know, you're, you're just rinsing off, uh, jumping in bed, getting plenty of rest. So with this one, this is a, this is a heating treatment. So, um, heating treatments, uh, remember you got to keep hydrated. You're going to be sweating a lot. You got to keep your head on, on ice. And so, um, and, and you don't want to be in there too, too long. Plus you, you, from what I experienced, you know, when you got to get out of there, I, I, I can only handle 15 20 minutes is like really hard to stay in there. Um, and I just jump out and I go right in cold shower, um, cold shower, you know, clean off and, um, dry off really good. Jump in bed, feel really good. It's a really good, um, immune booster, um, detoxifier. We do this for people, you know, overcoming addic uh, nicotine addictions and, and, um, so it's got a, a lot, well, it's got a lot of uses. Let me, let me go back here. Steam inhalation. Now, steam inhalation is really important and, and especially with upper respiratory, you know, uh, sicknesses, viruses. So, but one thing I've been able to do was kind of combine the, the, the Russian steam bath and the steam inhalation. Cause what I would do is I would just lift up the thing. And so I'm breathing, I would just be inhaling the, the, the steam from inside the, you know, the steam tank. So I kind of got both those treatments in one. My head is cold. I've got a rag on my head, but I'm sticking my nose under and I'm breathing in the steam. But otherwise, um, yeah, it's easy. You just, for steam inhalation, you boil a pan of water, um, you know, set it on your table um, with a, you know, heating pad or whatever, and then throw a towel over your head and breathe. The, the thing that people usually do maybe that makes this not so effective is they don't do it long enough. You really need to do that for a good 15 minutes at least. Um, you know, it's not just a few breaths. Okay. I'm better. Cause it can take some time to loosen up some of the congestion. So if, if, if it really, if you hit it good and you've got a lot of congestion, it can really clean you out. So it's, it's really, really an important, uh, treatment, uh, can be, can really help lessen your, your symptoms, you know, the discomfort and help get some of that, you know, congestion out. Um, I, fomentations. I'm just, I'm going to mention really briefly fomentations, a little bit advanced, uh, hydrotherapy technique of of creating these um, um, these uh, fomentations or like these uh, uh, cotton or canvas uh, cloths that you get piping hot and uh, with steam and then you wrap them wrap them with another t uh, uh, cloth or towel and then place that could be on the chest which can help dilate blood vessels draw you know, get some, increase some circulation and kind of treat the chest area for upper respiratory. It's really good. So, but that, but I'm not going to go any further. If you want to know more about fomentations, you know, you could, you could take our hydrotherapy course. We have an, we have a hydro, whole hydrotherapy course online. We have DVDs. Um, you could study into that a little bit more. You might find something online. Um, 
but I wanted to look uh, a couple more references here and then take some questions and talk about the cold bath really quick. So I just, I got a few more things here. So I'm going to keep going. Um, Medical Ministry 227. Our people should become intelligent in the treatment of sickness without the aid of poisonous drugs. Water treatment, wisely and skillfully given, may be the means of saving many lives. Let prayers of faith be offered by the bedside of the sick. Let the sick be encouraged to claim the promise of God for themselves. I just want to say, you know, if we've learned anything from this pandemic, you know, the, the a medication may not uh, be available. It may not be ready. You know, if, if you're someone that's, you know, looking for or waiting for vaccine, well, you may not be able to wait for that or you may not want to take a vaccine or whatever. But, but um, you know, water is something that, you know, you at least have. And, and you know, um, if faithfully, uh, obviously, I mean, there may be cases that, that uh, are just too extreme. And, 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 um, and of course, you have to be very conscientious. You may need to go to the hospital if you're having trouble breathing or so forth. Um, but um, I would just say, you know, we, 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 we need to take these, this disease serious and, and on any disease um, that we might get and, and treat extensively and try to avoid having to go to the hospital. Um, there could come a day and we, we, there were parts of the world that, that faced that last year where hospitals were too full to take people. So the, for a variety of reasons, you just may not be able to get help. Otherwise, we should become able and intelligent to do what we can in our homes and, and not be so dependent on, on, on others um, and not just be like, well, I guess I'm going to die because there's no ventilator for me and there's no place at the hospital. I'm just going to sit here and die or there's no vaccine for me. I'm just that's it for me, I guess. No, we're going to pray. We're going to do what we can. So we're going to pray. We're going to work in harm with our prayers. We're going to do what we can and um, use what we've known. We're going to do the hydrotherapy. We're going to get the rest. We're going to do the lemons. We're going to do the garlic. We're going to do the herbs. We're going to do everything we can. And we're leaving it in God's hands. Um, really good statement from 7th Testament on this as well. The things of nature are God's blessings provided to give health to the body, mind, and soul. Notice. It's not only physical, notice the mental aspect and, and even the spiritual. She's talking about the natural remedies, things in nature. They are given to the well to keep them well and to the sick to make them well. Now notice, connected with water treatment. So she's speaking in general, things in nature, okay, air and exercise, sunlight, good nutrition and so forth. But, but you connect that with some specific water treatments, hydrotherapy. They are more effective in restoring health than all the drug medication in the world. I just really like that statement. So I thought I would share that one. Very powerful. Do not underestimate the power, not of water, but of your immunity. God gave you an immune system that is designed to attack and deal with viruses, bacteria, funguses, and a variety of things. And we can help boost that immunity by the with the, treating our bodies well by eating well by exercising following all you know the laws of health the laws of nature and then intelligently using the things in nature and the treatment um and for for the sick okay um lastly on that point ninth testimony when in faith the human ancient does all he can to combat disease using the simple methods of treatment that god has provided his efforts will be blessed of God. These are promises that we can hold on to and may God receive all the glory. It is him that provides the healing, but he has, he points us to the things that he's provided in nature, the water, the clay, the sunlight, the herb, whatever it is. Um, let us use it in faith and let's learn intelligently how to use it better. So, um, Last thing I just want to squeeze in here is because I've really been getting into cold baths uh, this year. I heard just a tremendous testimony from Matt Parra, for those that, that, that know him, an, an evangelist, an American evangelist that's work, been working in Australia. He's worked with the Rise Institute. Um, he just had a great testimony. You can find it on his Facebook page. Um, so cold, the cold bath. I, so after hearing his testimony, I got thinking about it more and uh, give more extensive study to it. I've just got a couple of statements there about the cold bath. Um, you know, Matt said something really, really uh, important that, that I've been, it's really caused me the last couple of months of, of thought um, that, 
you know, in Genesis chapter three, there's the statement after the after the after sin and, and the the curse of sin, you know, is coming upon man, and God says, "Cursed be the earth for man's sake." Um, so the cursed earth is for our good, and so there's this thought that he that 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 he that he gave that I've I think there's just a lot of value in it is that. You know, there are harsh elements in the natural world, and if wisely used, they can be remedial and for the, the health and, and, and building up of, of our bodies. Um, you know, ice water was never a part of the perfect world, but after sin, there became cold water, cold temperatures, and so forth. Um, and, you know, just thinking about it, it just makes sense because, you know, it's, it's unfortunately, it's not the sweetest of herbs and fruits that are the most remedial it's usually the bitter herbs um you know it's the pungent garlic um and uh bitter golden seal or, or whatever it is um uh, that that is so powerful and you know the cursed elements the the harshness of that natural world has remedial properties that can help boost the body the body needs to be challenged you know and and so, you know, with exercise, the sweat of our brow, it's, it's hard. You don't like it. It's easier to sit on your couch. But if you get out there and sweat in the field, sweat in your garden, get to work, you know, it's a blessing for you. It's just going to strengthen you. It's, it's not easy. So that the, things that the things that are easy, the things that we just crave are not always for our good. So, you know, just the, the sweetest things, the oilest things, fried foods, all these things taste good. You know, but they're not the best things for us. I mean, not that the food, natural food is not good. It is good. But, you know, the natural cravings are for something else. And, and, and you know, just sitting, being lazy, you know, it's just, you know, who wants to go exercise? You kind of got to push yourself. Well, who wants to get in a cold, who wants to take a cold bath? It's not something you generally would want to do. But now I'm, I'm speaking from experience because for the past two months, I have taken cold showers um, I've always, as I said, finished with cold water, but now I, I start with cold, and uh, that, uh, and I just want to, you know, challenge everybody to try to uh, experiment with that. Um, so, just a couple really quick references on this. Most this is from Ministry of Healing. Most persons would receive benefit from a cold or tepid bath every day, morning or evening. Instead of increasing the liability to take cold, a bath properly taken fortifies against cold. She's talking about cold showers, she's not talking about warm showers. Because it improves the circulation. The blood is brought to the surface and a more easy and regular flow is obtained. The mind and the body alike are invigorated. So the body gets invigorated by exposure to this cold water. And not only the body, the mind too. Well, they go hand in hand. The muscles become more flexible. The intellect is made brighter. The bath is a soother of the nerves. Bathing helps with the bowels, the stomach, the liver, giving health and energy to each. It promotes digestion. All of this in the context of cold and uh, cool, uh, cool baths. Really, really, really uh, interesting stuff. In fact, uh, what you find if you search cold baths, you find that Ellen White herself was uh, commonly used cold baths. Um, several references about that. That she she says, "Well, I went to take my cold bath, and once it was just, just uh, it was seemed to be a practice of hers to take a cold bath." That she talks about its advantages, and this is a testimony of the sister C. Sister C, whoever she is, dressed to stir out to go anywhere because she must feel the change of the atmosphere and take cold. So this sister is afraid to go outside because it's cold out there and she thinks she's going to get cold and she thinks she's going to get sick. What is Ellen White's recommendation for her? She said she can yet be brought into a much better condition of health if she rightly treats herself. Two, uh, twice a week, she should take a general bath as cold as will be agreeable. A little colder every time until the skin is toned up. That's where, you know, this issue of like kind of getting more used to it. Like there's a tolerance level that you can get day by day, you know, uh, better at. Um, I've got, uh, oh, this, this is actually my last slide, everyone. I just found one. You have to search Ellen White's writings, cold baths, if you want to look at uh, more. But uh, this is a statement I found to just today, so I, I threw it in there. This is from Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, taken from the General Conference Bulletin, which meant it was a, a message he gave at a, um, at a GC session in 1895, where he wrote, the cold bath 
by increasing the resistance of the body through bringing into activity the blood and the circulation is one of the most efficient means by which we may be enabled to resist disease. Um, I just thought that was neat that he that he highlighted that. What have I benefited from? I, I've noticed I, I take uh, I start the day with a um, I, I don't always do stretching and exercise. That's my routine. I'm trying to do is stretching some light exercise get my heart pumping a bit, and then I jump into a cold shower, uh, anywhere from one to two minutes long. Um, and then I turn it too hot and I, and I soap up and I do my regular, you know, cleaning cause that's where the pores are open. And then I go back to cold. So I'm, I've been doing cold, hot, cold. Um, I don't even feel the last cold. It's not cold at all. Really at that point, that first cold is, is a bit, uh, e e I'm getting more used to it now. Summer's coming, so I'm feeling like the water's not cold enough. But I want to tell you, the past two months I've been doing this, I have noticeably no, uh, 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 witnessed a, a better energy levels, uh, more alertness, um, less tiredness, um, just feeling a whole lot better, not only in the morning, not only like the hours afterwards, but even in the afternoon. I'm like, you know what? Since I've been doing that like two minutes strong cold in the morning, my afternoons, I'm feeling more energy and more alert. I don't have that, that sluggishness so much. Um, I mean, of course, that's why if I'm sleeping well and doing everything else uh, right. But I just wanted to share that. Um, challenge yourself. I'm kind of excited to, to do it more and uh, maybe do some plunging, you know, with some ice, like an ice water plunge. I think it's just really good. It's just kind of now if you're sick, you know, you may not be able to handle that. It's not really a sick. This is more of a tonic like I, I, I talked about. So the cold bath is something you know, for um, just to keep you healthy, keep, keep you boosted, keep your immunity strong. Okay. Sorry, I've talked so much on this. I'm, I'm kind of passionate, as you can probably see, about hydrotherapy. I just love talking about it. Let me try to hit a few questions here. Uh, Olga, do you end the hot bath, the hot foot bath with cold? Yes, thank you for saying the hot foot bath, pour cold water over your feet. That's the best way to finish any treatment usually is with a little cold. It kind of closes up your pores. Uh, makes it better. Can these therapies be used for seasonal allergies? Yeah, what well, can help the symptoms? Sure, like steam inhalation. Um, it, it can help, you know, the circulation can, can kind of help. You know, it's not going to mean you're not going to have allergies, but it can definitely help with your symptoms. could help with the, the headache, the congestion. Um, does anybody else have a question here? I'm just kind of scrolling through here. How much water should you drink? Uh, well, a lot. Um, Per day, I'm not sure what that question really is. Uh, you know, you should drink uh, what you drink until you, you, your urine should be pretty clear or light or pale yellow. Um, if your urine is is dark, getting dark at any time of the day, it just means you're not. They didn't drink enough. That's the best answer because there's variations of how much water you should drink according to your weight, according to how much you'd be sweating, um, hot weather, and so forth. Um, so yeah, th thanks for those questions. If you have any other questions, um, we're, we're really out of time. Uh, you can, you can, um, you can email me. My, my email is, uh, James at lighting the world.org. Um, on our, thank you. Not less than two liters a day for an adult. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very good. Um, so yeah, let's use water. Let's drink, drink a lot of it. Um, and let's practice our showers. Um, Kellogg really got into more detail and something I might talk about is this, like, kind of like, a taking a cold top rag, I mean, a wet rag and uh, with cold water and kind of giving yourself like a sponge bath. I do talked about how she did that with cold water. She'd kind of start a fire in the morning. Morning for her was like 2 a.m. I'm realizing she was quite an incredible person. So she's like waking up at two o'clock in the morning, getting her fire started, doing a cold kind of sponge bath, drying off. And that would make her more alert. She says, my mind is clear. And she just right, 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 right. Um, so there are so many, I mean, this could go on for hours. We, we, you know, we teach hydrotherapy for, with practice, we do like 40 hours at, at well. So just a lot, a lot there. It's already nine o'clock. So our ASI hour is over. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this presentation. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, shoot me an email. Uh, thanks for joining. Appreciate you all very much. Uh, let, why don't we have close with a word of prayer? Oh, and then if you want to check our website, let me just type it in here for those that may not. 
lightingtheworld.org. That's where you can find our hydrotherapy course if you wanted to take that. We have videos of all of our treatments. Um, there are DVDs there. You know, if you can come to a medical missionary institute like Wildwood, Uchi Pine, somewhere, there you can get the training hands on. That's great. That's even better. But um, so, yeah, let's just read up on it, study, and do what we can. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and for providing healing in the natural world, your creation, in the plants, in the leaves, in the um, fruits, vegetables, and in the earth, even in the ground, in the clay, the sunlight, the air, and as we've talked about, water, one of your great remedies. Um, thank you, Lord, for making it so simple. It even confounds the wise. Thank you for the healing power there is in water. Uh, of course, it takes study, experience, and um, to learn how to use it better and learn how to use it uh, well for different conditions, different issues. So give us that wisdom that we may uh, be uh, good to our own bodies you've given to us, to our families, and, and that we might be able to even advise uh, those that we come in contact with that may benefit from this information. Thank you for that goodness, Lord. Um, bless each one this evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, very much. You have a good evening. We'll see you next week at the ASI Hour.